So here's the unit we're all interested in. It's a chain sun, 70 millimeter, 10 bladed EDF unit. In mine, I've got a 3000 kV motor from Hobby King, Outrunner. I don't know, it's a $12 motor or so, something like that. Speed controller and a servo tester for throttle. And uh, I was going to do some more control over my source, but I, honestly this battery is just fine because it produces about 450 watts wide open throttle as does the Edo Models unit that we're comparing it to, the Schubler 70 meter DS30 fat, 3 blader. So here's a quick run up here. So there you go, 450 watts-ish, close enough, we'll uh, be comparing the power in to the thrust out of an installed airframe anyway. So I felt the starting voltage and the charge of the pack is less important than the watts actually achieved. Anyway, moving forward now. Here is the Edo Models F15 that I've got, it's about three years old, maybe even a bit more. So it's pretty beat up, you can see all kinds of dings, very soft foam. And uh, if there's a disappointment in the way they put the model together, it's the foam they chose, actually. Too bad it wasn't EPO or something as good. So, Castle Creations 45 amp speed controller on 3S. I'm using the same packs I just used to test the Chain Sun 10 bladed 70 millimeter. Except in this plane, I've got a DS30. So, a three bladed, oh, you can't see it. At least I can't see it in this light. A three bladed carbon fiber, very expensive fan unit. It's called to fame as its noise, which is ear splitting. Also its weight, super lightweight, much lighter than any other fan out there in the 70 millimeter class. And then of course it's very well balanced. They produce good power and uh, at zero vibration. So let's run this thing up. So there you have it. <clears throat> the two power plants are producing about the same power, although I want to take this out after uh, I do the butchering and uh, compare it on the test stand as well, but 460-465 watts inside the F-15 airframe. Okay, so after some very careful surgery, the tools of the trade on the right side there, I have removed the hatch, which was removed and glued in probably five times since I've owned this plane. and. Uh, no longer willing to do it again without coming out in pieces like that. So there's the DS30. See if I can get the iPhone to focus properly. And as you can see, it's only just taped in. Perfectly adequate for a model of this power and this weight and this complexity. Here's the DS30 up close and personal. Three bladed carbon fiber, really tight fitting rotor to the shroud, much tighter than you'd see today. And it's being powered by a Mega 1615 two-turn motor. Uh, 4,000 and some kV, don't remember. But uh, what is needed to spin this thing up to uh, 450 watts or so. Found a lip in my bag of goodies. I believe this is off of an old mini fan, but the bottom line is it is nice and flush on the inside here and has a nice large radius uh, lip all the way around, so should be good for testing purposes. So please excuse my ghetto arrangement here, but uh, as it turns out the carbon fiber shroud is so thin on the DS30 that any pressure like I normally use for clamping my fans and distorts it and I get rubbing. The clearance between the blades and the shroud is so tight. Anyway, uh, this is what I came up with over a period of time. The tape is being used in shear so it should hold very nicely. and uh, it doesn't add any undue force on the fan that distorts it. So here we go. We're looking for 450 watts at max throttle on 3S.
So it's a little closer to 420. Um, ballpark close enough, I think, for us to get a feel for how the two fans will perform in the same model compared to how they performed out of the same model. Well, of course, I've trashed the upper hatch. No way around it. It's glued in way too well for me to get it in one piece. So now I have to create a way of sealing the fan in there. So you can see that the fan, well, it's shorter than is the opening. So the sealing system I've come up with is to uh, just make some Depron, roll it around the fan, tape it in place, and I can, I can, uh, I don't know if you can see this, but I can pull it back. It's telescopic, right? So I can pull it back like this, or I can extend it out. And uh, my intention then is to put it in place and then slide this thing out until it uh, seals properly, kind of like this in there, right? Because obviously a, a good seal is part and parcel of determining how it's going to work in somebody else's plane <clears throat> if they do have a hatch in good shape. All right, next shot should be with the thing installed. I'm afraid I've run out of time tonight, so I have connected the fan, I've got my servo tester up and running, watt meter ready to rock, another freshly charged 3S 2200 milliamp hour 20 to 30 C cell ready to go. I've uh, got a system of using Depron and a, <laughs> a fan fold wedge in there to seal the intake as much as I think is needed. Um, clearly it's not airtight as a seal. I've already tested this briefly on a depleted pack to be able to see that there is no appreciable airflow around the fan, either at the exit or at the entrance to the fan. So, anyway, this is the deal. And uh, just from my depleted pack, it wasn't quite reaching the, the wattage I was expecting, so I'm kind of curious to see what's going to happen here. I may end up not quite having the, the power I was hoping to have once it's installed, which would be an interesting piece of data. Okay, sorry for the ghetto quality of this video here, but I'm really running out of time here. So 12.3, which is on my charger, a full charge. I realize some of you are seeing 12.5 and such, but uh, I'm using a... Uh, an older charger that was a little more conservative with its uh, algorithm. So, here we go. So 400 watts, basically just under, not 450 like it was out in the open. Interesting that it should see a lower, a lower rating. Also lower than the uh, the Schubler was in there. So I'm kind of skeptical. I'm going to have one to one thrust to weight like I did. Well, I probably had 1.2 to one with the Schubler before ripping it out. <laughs> and now with this fan here, which isn't perfectly balanced by the way, I'm probably guessing going to have about 0 0.9, 0 0.8 to one thrust away. Okay, that's my guess. Let me check it out. Okay, well time's up and testing is over. And the part that I couldn't show is the part that happens to be the most interesting. Um, the Schubler, when I tested it this evening with the packs I'm using these days, probably had 1.2 to one thrust to weight. So the plane was easily heading for the ceiling at full throttle, holding it by the nose. It's nowhere near that now. With this unit here, now that's not to say that it's not a little bit heavier, because it is. The, the fan's a bit heavier, I've got a little bit more wire, and I've got an extra ounce I'm hanging on to with that speed controller I'm using in this plane. So, compared to how I had it set up with the Schubler, it probably weighs two ounces more than it did. Call it, if I remember, maybe 26 ounces now. Maybe 27. But I'm nowhere near that in thrust. I bet you I'm only 0 0.6, 0 0.7 to 1 thrust away. This fan is not dealing very well at all with uh, with the ductwork. It's no worse off as far as the air reaching the fan than, than the Schubler was and certainly the exhaust is no different but I'm not getting the same wattage with the same pack. I'm 50 watts down and I'm also probably 30 percent down on thrust. So an interesting piece of trivia that we've learned here this evening. I, um, <clears throat> I don't want to say this test is definitive because I, I was rushed and there are certainly some things I could have done that uh, could have helped fill in a few gaps, like having a better, well, an existing thrust meter, actually, rather than just using the weight of the model to gauge whether I have one-to-one -one or not. 
But that aside, I, th I still think it's fairly definitive that this, this fan is not doing especially well in a poorly ducted model.